Hello and welcome to your weekly edition of Resource PNG. Mr. Botton, Managing Director of Oil Surge PNG Limited, recently spoke at the Business Advantage Summit in Port Moresby. Now, according to Mr. Botton, Papua New Guinea is at crossroads for gas commercialization and the country would benefit from a cooperative approach to developing the new gas projects. According to Peter Botten, Managing Director of Oil Search Limited, Papua New Guinea is at crossroads for gas commercialization. He said this at the recent 2014 PNG Advantage Investments and Infrastructure Summit in Port Moresby as he laid out his arguments for a cooperative approach to developing the new gas projects. Significant reserves have already been discovered in PNG, which will require building at least three new gas processing plants over the next five to seven years at a cost of approximately 25 to 28 billion US dollars. Mr. Botton said that PNG had been good for oil search, returning 754% in shareholder returns over the last 10 years. Botton said a lot was owed to the fact that there was relative political and fiscal stability. Oil Surge believes that three more trains or processing plants out in the Gulf and Highlands is very likely and that they plan to deliver over the next five to seven years, leveraging as much as possible the infrastructure that currently exists in these regions. At present, Hyde is the largest field in PNG although more reserves could be found in the Elk Antelope field in the next few months. Analysts had predicted a further 5 billion barrels equivalent of oil could be found. That's about 30 trillion cubic feet of gas. Oil Search has about 12 trillion cubic feet of gas in its portfolio and just under another 4 trillion cubic feet may be available to oil search. The amount of proven and undeveloped gas totals about 14 trillion cubic feet. The first PNG LNG plant contains 9 trillion cubic feet. There is already basis for a significant expansion of LNG business in PNG. Mr. Botton said the next six months is critical for understanding the amount of reserves how to get them out and how to build each energy train. And the next 12 to 18 months will also be critical to get confirmation from the national government that the fiscal regime will be stable. Mr. Botton warned that the market over the next five to seven years will be a more difficult place and oil search may not be able to achieve the same pricing that PNG LNG 1 and 2 achieved. The LNG customers believe they have a lot more choice in the market uh, from various suppliers in North America, from East Africa and others. So when we look and go into the market over the period of time, five to seven years, it's a much more difficult place to be and probably not going to achieve quite the same pricing levels that PNG LNG 1 and 2 did. However, PNG now has an established reputation as a supplier. Mr Botton said, the fact that the first LNG plant had been built on time within a revised budget, had built a substantial infrastructure like airfields and camps, and had sold almost all the gas to quality buyers, would do well when it comes to finance the next three trains. So what are the lessons that PNG can learn from other countries? Referring to the Curtis Island LNG development in Gladstone in Queensland, Northern Australia, Botton pointed out there have been three separate LNG developments built at the same time with almost no connection or cooperation between the three projects. Overall, those three projects are estimated to have spent somewhere around $70 billion and uh, in terms of investment. 
They don't talk to each other. They're actually using the same core contractor to build the LNG plant, but different contractors to build the rest. And when you look at the $70 billion or thereabouts that is being spent there to build these projects, the three of them all sit there and you can see three lots of tanks, three lots of jetties, three lots of camps, all of which duplicate capital, all of which reduce the speed to market, and all of which erodes shareholder value across all three projects. What we don't want to do in PNG is to have that lack of coordination in any new development across any LNG business that we have up here. The lack of coordination between gas developers will be costly and inefficient, with the government as the only entity to be a shareholder in each gas development company will end up losing the most. Stay tuned, we'll be right back for more after these short messages. Thanks for staying with us. We now join Leanne Girari for a short interview with Mr. Botton. I have with me on the show tonight Mr. Peter Botton, the Managing Director for Oil Search. Welcome to the show, sir. Good to be here. How are you? Very well. Um, so, oil liquids from Exxon Mobil's um, gas export is being blended into crude oil, um, almost doubling crude exports. What are your plans and how are productions this year? Well, obviously, um, the commissioning of PNG LNG has. Uh, and commissioning it early has been a huge achievement for, uh, for SR Highlands and ExxonMobil. And uh, obviously that flows on with such a smooth process uh, to higher production. And uh, we've adjusted our production guidelines uh, during the year to reflect that early commissioning and smooth uh, development of the project. We're right at the top end of our uh, production guidance at the moment of around 20 million barrels of oil equivalent this year, oil search share. And that's a significant record for us. and. Uh, uh, both production of LNG and also uh, oil uh, is going very strongly for us. Okay, so you have been promising increase in dividends. Um, is it likely to happen anytime sooner since the production has started earlier? Yes, there it is. I, we hope to be able to announce uh, a significantly higher dividend stream and a predictable stream to our shareholders uh, in February at the uh, 2014 full year results. It is dependent on passing a number of financial operations tests on the project, but if they pass, as we hope we will, we'll be able to uh, improve and significantly increase our dividends uh, from 2000, early 2015. How soon will the third train be ready for the PNG LNG project? Well, today I was discussing what I think to be um, the future of the gas sector in PNG. And although it's an oil search view, probably only, we, we see at least three trains coming over the next five to, to seven years, subject to a range of things happening in the short term. The first of which is establishing the reserves. We, we're one of the very few companies that straddle both the potential development at El Cantaloupe with Interoil and Total, and we also uh, obviously are part of PNG LNG. Um, our future is being, uh, to a degree, plotted for us by our major strategic review that we're ta that's taking place in the company now and we therefore will have some plans uh, for the next five to seven years as to how we can participate in the growth of the sector in this country. Okay, so now that the Middle East has gotten pretty serious, the situation over there, will oil search be depending more on the oil and gas here in Papua New Guinea? Well, uh, oil and gas uh, assets that we have here make up about 98% of our total business. So if P&G goes well, we go well. Um, what we have in the Middle East is um, what we think to be quite an exciting um, new discovery, a, a pretty large oil field. Uh, and as you say, is the, um, the security situation in Kurdistan is not particularly good. But our actual operations have not been seriously impacted by that and we keep our people safe and all our people are there. But uh, I, I remind you that that's a little bit of a sideshow to our total business which is very much tied to the future here. What do you think about the government's PPP plans? Look, we uh, fully endorse them. I think the speech this morning and uh, what the Prime Minister announced is wholeheartedly supported by, uh, by Allsearch. 
Um, we think the private sector needs to step up and help uh, the government uh, deliver a, a range of services and be part of the solution for delivery of services across the country. Um, clearly, um, we think um, that some of those uh, areas are challenged uh, in, in the public sector and using the skills and the abilities of uh, companies like Oil Search to help deliver some of the roads, the schools, the hospitals and help build the capacity not just in the national government but also in the, um, the provincial governments, help them deliver the services using our skills and, and our ability on, on the ground. And in actual fact, Oil Search has now some 30 odd um, uh, private public partnerships primarily through tax credit projects to deliver something over 400 million kinas worth of value on behalf of the state um, uh, already going on whether they be Maria House or La Robson Oval or some of the roads in Southern Highlands, some of the schools, some of the other infrastructure projects. So we're very very much a supporter to play a role uh, not just in infrastructure but also in power delivery and I think it's up to the private sector to step up and help government and this provides a framework for it to happen. Okay, so you just spoke at the Business Advantage Conference. What was the highlight of your speech? Well, I, I made several points. Uh, firstly, I'm, I, I think there's enough discovered gas in Papua New Guinea for what we believe to be at least three trains, three new LNG trains moving forward over the next five to seven years. And certainly we believe that's the core of Oil Search's future growth and value delivery. There are a number of things that need to happen to make that work and first off we need to confirm exactly where the reserves are and therefore scope how, how small or large the, uh, the projects we're going to build. Also it straddles a number of major projects and certainly we're involved in PNG LNG. We're also involved in the El Cantaloupe Total project, uh, interoil uh, project and uh, we think uh, that uh, working cooperatively between the projects there's a lot of value to be had in terms of delivering both uh, projects, both likely projects in, uh, in a timely and cost effective way. We think the, the future of PNG is really exciting but there are a number of things we have to do to help that, that, that happen and that's to make sure working with government, landowners etc that some of the, um, uh, the services that are needed out in the, in, in the projects areas and around the country such as power are delivered and make sure that uh, those things uh, are happening uh, and that provides a platform for stable operations and the growth of our business. Thank you Mr. Botton for your time. Thank you. That was Mr. Peter Botton, Managing Director of Oil Search. Don't go away, we'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to Resource PNG. The Port Moresby Chamber of Commerce and Industry recently had a breakfast meeting where Talisman Energy gave an update of its operations in PNG. We caught up with Grant Christie, the Vice President and General Manager of Talisman's Australasia Operations, and Mr. John Emery, Project Manager of the Sanley Project. Here's that interview. Um, Talisman Energy, Grant, tell us a little bit about. Uh who you are, how big you are, and uh, then we'll talk about what, what you're thinking about PNG. Fantastic. So, um, Talisman is a Canadian based company. Um, we have two core regions, the Americas and Asia. We produce around about 375 to 400,000 barrels a day globally, um, and we have an annual spend of about $3, $3 billion, um, plus or minus. So. Okay. And, uh, your involvement in Papua New Guinea, who, who, who's your people on the ground for example, who have you got here? So we've got two, um, two of my management team on the ground here, so we've got Robin Moina um, who looks after the community relations and um, the government affairs and we have Richard Kassman who's our senior government advisor, He's, okay. he heads up our office. I guess uh, what I want to ask straight away is what's it like doing business in PNG for you guys? <laughs> You know, PNG is uh, is a is one of the core exploration areas for our company. This is Talisman globally. Um, we we love the Western Province, is which where we're predominantly located. Um, it's a prolific hydrocarbon um, hydrocarbon basin, 
and it fits really well with what we've known and experienced overseas from working in Peru, Colombia and North America. So, um, you know, we love the terrain, we love the geology and more importantly, the people um, are a really good fit with the talisman culture and I think the talisman culture is a good fit with Papua New Guinea. Yeah, well, that's, that's encouraging to hear. There's not a lot of people would say that about the poor old Western province. But, uh, I mean, the fiscal regime for you, I mean, working with uh, provincial government, working with national government, uh, how do you find that? So the support that we've gotten from the national government, government and the provincial government has really been um, fantastic. We've, we've gotten um, the first Stanley um, project PDL over the line for us. Uh, as the operator of that project, you know, that it, it's taken an immense amount of, of support and the government has been there for us. Um, the, the robustness and the stability of the fiscal regime in PNG I think is one of the highlights. Um, it, it really gives us a lot of business confidence and our consortium partners Mitsubishi and Santos confidence to be able to invest in this, um, in this country knowing that we've got the backing of the government. I noticed this morning one of your guests was uh, Governor Ati Wabiro from Western Province. Uh, um, a lot of people worry about landowner issues, etc., in these projects and public. How have you found that? So the landowner, um, the landowner challenge, I would say, uh, it, when we first came in, um, it took us some time to learn the people, learn uh, the various tribes. But with um, a basis of our values of respect, open, honest communication, and and some really good people, the Robin and, and Richard on the ground. To be able to head us in the right direction, um, you know, we've we've developed very good relationships in the Western Province. Um, we've had Ati Wabiro come out and visit our drilling rigs and drilling, visit our seismic lines um, at, to develop that understanding. Um, and from that understanding and listening, you know, I think we've developed very good relationships. You, you've had the interaction with the uh, local member for Fly, Boca Condra, the Minister for Tourism, uh, Arts and Culture. Mm -hmm. So th these guys have all been supporting this project. They've been a fantastic sport to this project. Okay. I, I guess I'll be a bit remiss. Uh, I should have really started. I said, where is it? Where is the Stanley project? Because I mean, uh, some people might not know. So the Stanley project is about 40 kilometers north of Kiunga, um, which is based on the Fly River um, in the Western province. Perfect. John, thank you very much for your presentation this morning. Uh, um, an exciting little project would be a but very exciting for PNG. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's tough to present a scale that, that fits for most people uh, because when we, we talk about a, a, an oil and gas project, yes. there's many different sizes. And, and PNG is quite frankly used to the uh, PNG LNG project, which, which is well, that, that, much I, I, larger. Sorry to interrupt you there, but I mean, so where did the oil come from? Because I thought you guys were looking for gas. <laughs> Was we, that something we, that's new? Or? It, it is actually a product of the gas. Yes. Uh, so it, it's called a condensate, and it, 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 okay. it's, a, it's a product of the gas stream. So it, it, it's separated from the gas stream. So we did find gas, yes. uh, but we're trying to commercialize early. And to do that, we're, we're stripping out the liquid portion of the gas stream for early sales. Okay. And what happens to the gas? Back in the ground? Or? Yeah. Yes, initially our, our thoughts were in order to commercialize we, early, we thought we would put the gas back in the ground uh, until a, a larger domestic market opens up or until we come up with a, an LNG scheme okay. of our own. All right, okay. Um, Grant's told us where the project is. Uh, you're the project manager. How, how long have you been the project manager? Yeah. I've, I've been on the project for four and a half years. Uh, 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 it's been uh, a very exciting time for me, uh, yeah. and, uh, and I'm looking very forward to starting the execution I, I, phase. I sensed that excitement on the project this morning. Yeah. Uh, your timeline for, say, getting to production? I mean, uh, obviously there's, uh, there's other factors there. Tell yeah. me about that, but when do you think you're going to be in production? Uh, project managers will always want to couch <laughs> everything they say, and I'm, I'm no different than yeah, others. Please, um, please but, do so, no problem. Uh, uh, but our timeline is approximately two years. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, uh, a, a good portion of that is getting ready to put the equipment on the ground, and then actually we've got a year of putting the equipment on the ground and, and putting it together. Is that delay, I mean, I think I heard you saying you started in 2011, is that delay caused you issues in terms of sourcing equipment, etc.? 
There, there's two ways to look. Up. There's there's two ways to look at it. In in one aspect, yes, it's been uh, challenging for both our vendors and and you know in industry in, in general to understand what's going on because we've 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 pushed the project forward in 2011, thinking okay. that we were going to be ready. Uh, on the other hand, it's allowed us the opportunity to do a lot of engineering that wouldn't have normally been done at this stage. So my presentation was probably better mm -hmm. developed than some others you may have seen because of the yes. fact that we've got a lot of engineering done on it already. So uh, there's, if, if you play it right, you can take every disadvantage to an advantage, and we've tried to do that. Tell me a little bit about the logistics of the project. I mean, it, it seemed to me when I looked at it, I mean, uh, as you, as you, we're all sort of a little bit used to the LNG, the scale of that. It, right. it looked a lot smaller than that. Uh, um, it looked kind of funky, to be quite honest. It was, uh, it, it looked quite innovative. You know, we there's advantages in the Western province, and one of the key advantages for us in the Stanley project is the fact that there's there's an existing road. So okay. we, we've got a great advantage in that there's a road that goes to the Octeti mine. We're taking full full uh, utilization of that in, in our development. With that road comes some limitations, and, and, and we've had to design our equipment for the road, whereas other people get to design the road for the equipment. I've designed the equipment for, for the road. So you're talking about things like bridges and Bridges, yeah, the bridges and load capacities of the bridges. So I've had to be very specific to my fabricators in how they develop the, 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 the equipment. So okay. it's quite technically challenging. So, so I assume then that a lot of the equipment is fabricated off-site then, sounds like? Yeah, this, this, this equipment is, is very specialized and has been developed over several years. Uh, so it's not something that can be just picked up and, 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 and built by, by anyone. Uh, it's very sophisticated. So we're no different than PNG and LNG in that regard, whereas a lot of the equipment needed to come in from outside the country. And it's no different in Canada. Some of this equipment would come from outside of Canada as well. So it's just it's sophisticated, and we're trying to put the best equipment so on this the is ground. The, this is, it's fairly at the front of the queue in terms of technology of this stuff. This, this plant uh, processing facility will, will be as technically developed as any in the world. Okay, excellent. Production, what are, what are you initially, if it's a condensates and, and then eventually gas, what are you going to produce from this project? We, we've designed the facility to handle 4,000 barrels a day of condensate. Uh, that was uh, an interesting, interesting way of, about designing. We actually had to look at how much uh, cargo we could take down the Fly River at any one time, and we developed the entire process around how much cargo go down go down the Fly River and, and what would be a reasonable timeline for one tanker to do that. So, so we've come up with four thousand barrels. Issues with water in the river, I guess, for you at some uh, stage. Yeah, w water in the d the river, but also the Fly River is a very uh, challenging navigable river. Yes. So, so it's got a lot of tight bends. So you can only get a tanker of a certain size. So we're not carrying a a, a super tanker or a maxi tanker that a lot of people would. Uh -huh. We've got a purposely built okay. tanker. For the Fly Just River. explain to, to the viewers a little bit. So there's the, the plant, which is 40 kilometers north of Kyunga. Right. How does the condensate get to the river? Uh, so so we've, we've designed the facility uh, to separate at, at the plant site and the well site. Uh, it's then stored in a, in a tank. The condensate is stored in a tank. And when we get a reasonable load, we, we ship it down uh, a 40 kilometer pipeline. Uh, to to the Fly River. Does it have to be pumped down? Or yes, it's it's pumped down from from Stanley into a big tank uh, near near the town of Kiunga, yes. near the actual okay. town of Kiunga Airport, a seventy five thousand barrel tank. Uh, and then when the tanker comes, we we set more pumps there and a bigger pipeline so we can load the tanker in approximately eight and a half to nine hours. Okay. You talked about the technology of the actual pipeline. It was oh yeah. We're all assuming that it's you know big steel pipes and that, but it, it's not. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, one of the newer technologies that, that we, we're carrying forward for PNG is, is a, a, a fiberglass uh, type of pipeline. Uh, something new for PNG, but certainly not new for industry. Uh, something that's been run several times in, in, in Canada. It, it just gives us a little more uh, freedom in how we construct. It's easier to construct. It needs less welding. Uh, it it outshorten our timeline. Is it in the ground or above ground? It'll be in the ground, in yeah. The ground. yeah. Uh, we ver heard very clearly from all the landowners that uh, in, in the area, we, we canvassed them about 
uh, above ground, below ground, and they were all clearly wanted at below ground. Although this for years has been a slurry pipeline that's mm -hmm. run from Okteri to yeah. halfway and then popped onto Kyunga and it's never been touched. You know, yeah. they, um, well, you wouldn't want to touch it anyway with the pressure in it. But uh, so, that, so that's been done in consultation with landowners. Yeah, the landowners were were very adamant about us burying, <laughs> burying the pipeline. <laughs> so, so we, we we listened to that message and we buried it. Okay, I think that sounds like that might be a very important message if it's coming from them. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. Yeah. John, sounds like a really exciting project. We wish you well with that. Um, I, I hope you can keep to that timeline of two years. Um, uh, we certainly in business in PNG we're. You know, we're, we're, we're in this major project now, but there's a little bit of a hiatus and we're right. waiting for next project to come and we're delighted that uh, that that's, looks like that's going to be Talisman Energy, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, John. Well, that's all we have for you tonight on Resource PNG. If you want to know more about the program, do email us on this address. That's resourcepng at emtv.com.pg or check MTV online. That's www.emtv.com.pg and go to our Resource PNG page. You can also check out our Facebook page. Until the same time next week, have a pleasant evening.